Hi there, my name is Paul Halliday, and in this video, we'll be taking a look at Firebase Storage, the context of which will be inside of an Ionic Angular application. So let's get started and make a new Ionic app by running Ionic Start Firebase Storage Ionic, and we'll base this on the blank template. Our use case will be taking a picture from our camera and then of course uploading this to Firebase and then displaying this on screen. The awesome thing about this is we'll be using the JavaScript Firebase SDK and this is not Angular Fire 2. So usually when we interface with Firebase in our Angular apps, we're using both the Firebase SDK and Angular Fire 2. But this tutorial will simply be looking at the Firebase JavaScript SDK. This means it's the same for just about every platform you're using and nothing here is Angular specific. Awesome, we can now CD into Firebase Storage Ionic and inside of here we need to install our project dependencies. So let's think about what those project dependencies are. I imagine we will need Firebase and we'll also need the types for Ionic Native slash camera. So let's add these to the project. And then afterwards, we'll add the Cordova plugin for the camera. And that can be done with Ionic Cordova plugin add Cordova plugin camera. Once we've done all of this, let's run Ionic Lab just for now, and then we'll run this on a device or an emulator in a moment. As well as that, we can open this up inside of our editor with code dot. So far, we should be greeted with a blank Ionic application, which is standard for everything that we do when we create a new project based on that blank template. The next thing to do is integrate Firebase, and if you haven't already, create a Firebase account. So head over to the Firebase dashboard by navigating to firebase.google.com and when you've logged in, you should be given the Welcome to Firebase screen. Either select your project if you're coming back to Firebase or if you're coming for the first time, select Add Project. I'm gonna select the country equal to United Kingdom and I'm also gonna call this Firebase Storage Ionic hit create project to continue. And after that, we're going to navigate to storage. So hit storage here on the left and then select get started. As you can see, if we head over to the rules tab, Firebase storage allows us to read and write to the database if we are logged in. At this moment in time, I'm not going to look at authentication, but I've already made some videos on that. So if you are interested in authentication, check out those first. And right now we are simply going to delete if request.auth is not equal to true. So let's allow read and write on all paths. Hit publish, and this will save our rules and you should get your security rules are set to public. Anyone can read or write to your storage bucket. That's exactly what we want for now. And the next thing to do is capture our API key and add it to our Ionic project. So if we go back over to overview, we can see welcome to Firebase, get started here. Select add Firebase to your web app. You'll then get a pop-up which allows us to see our API and other information about the project. Simply copy the object itself. So everything from this brace to this brace. And we can then navigate to our application and add this inside of our project. So here we are inside of the Firebase storage project that we created earlier with the CLI. And there are numerous amounts of ways to get started with adding Firebase into your project. And what I'm going to do is simply make a new file named Firebase config.ts. And in here we will export a constant named Firebase config. And what we can do here is paste in your API information. So this will contain your API key, your auth domain, database URL, and so on. 
Obviously the values here on screen are simply dummy information, but for you, you should have the correct info from the Firebase dashboard. Once we've done that, we can initialize Firebase inside of our component. And what I want to do is head over to home.ts. This is our homepage. And as we're not using Angular Fire, we're simply going to initialize Firebase inside of this component only. So to start off, let's import Firebase. Let's import storage from Firebase. And that will allow us to use the storage API. We'll also need the initialize app function, and that allows us to initialize the Firebase SDK with our information. So inside of the constructor or ng on init, we can say initialize app and pass in the Firebase config. If you remember, the Firebase config comes from app slash Firebase config. Let's now take a look at using the camera, which will allow the user to take a photo and then of course upload this to Firebase storage. So if we head over to appmodule.ts and inside of our providers, we can import camera. That comes from ionic native slash camera. And then back inside of our homepage, we can inject camera into this component. So let's inject a private camera of type camera. We'll need to import the camera once again from ionic native. And now we can make ourselves a function which allows us to take a photo. So let's make a take photo function. And we first off start by defining camera options. So the camera options have an interface here called camera options. Let's import that and add that to ionic native slash camera. And we can make this equal to a new object, which contains some information. I'm not interested in having a large file size. So let's make the quality something like 50. I want quite a small image. So we'll call this 600 by 600. The destination type will be this dot camera dot destination type dot data URL. This gives us our camera image back as a base 64 image. And there are a variety of different ways in which we can capture this and upload it over to Firebase. We'll encode our image by saying this dot camera dot encoding type equal to JPEG. And finally, we'll ensure to scope this to only look at pictures. So that is our camera options. We can now use the camera to get the picture, pass in our options, and I will make this function an async function. So we'll wrap this inside of a try catch. And we'll say await this dot camera dot get picture. So we can capture the result of that into the result variable. We can then capture a new storage reference. So let's say const pictures is equal to storage dot ref. And the reference will be pictures. And then we can say pictures dot put string pass through the result. And before doing so, I'm going to make a new const image, which will be the data image slash JPEG because it's a JPEG image. And as this is base 64, we will combine that and the result. Therefore, we can put string for the image and tell Firebase that this is actually a data URL. Let's head over to our home.html. And inside of here, I'm going to change the title to Firebase Storage. I'm going to give the navbar color of primary. And we'll also make a button that simply says take photo. This will require the ion button attribute 
and the click event of take photo. We can then run this on our Android device. And if we've done everything correctly, we should be able to take a photo and upload this to Firebase storage. Let's check that out. To run this on Android, I'll be running Ionic Cordova run Android L. This will start a live reload server on our Android device. And if we go ahead now and select take photo, you won't be able to see this here on the screen at the moment. But if we then take this photo of the current computer screen and we hit OK, this will take us back to the home page where we get that take photo button once again. But now if we navigate back to Firebase, we should see our photo. Here we are back over at the Firebase dashboard. And if we select this picture here named pictures, we can see that here is the photo that we just took. A couple of quick improvements to this would be to make its own folder pictures slash and then perhaps call the image a random ID or a specific thing. For example, if we had the pictures slash my photo and if we save the file and before going any further, I'm also going to delete this pictures here on the Firebase dashboard. And if we elect to take a photo once again, I'm simply going to take a photo now of the code. You can see that our storage now has a pictures folder and inside is that my photo that does contain obviously the photo of the code. At the moment, you can see that's also the wrong way around. That can be fixed inside of our camera options. If we select correct orientation and make that equal to true, that will flip the photo around so it's displayed correctly. So that's how we can get started with Firebase storage inside of our JavaScript applications. This is a very simplistic example. And honestly, you can do way better than this, but I just want to get you into Firebase storage and starting to use it to store your photos and other information. A thing that you may want to keep in mind here is when we use destination type of data URL, this is very, very memory intensive. So you will run into problems if you're using this in production. I would not recommend that. I would look at other things like file URI and so on. But this should get you up and running with Firebase storage at least.